Now, I don't use the Kitty Terminal emulator myself, but about a year or so ago, I did use it quite extensively. And you know what? It's a pretty good terminal emulator, and it's got some really cool features added in through some of the kitten modules that makes it actually really cool to use. But nowadays, I'm using Alacrity. But recently, someone told me about a weird bit of drama that happened in the kitty community that I felt like I should probably talk about. Now, I don't care about the drama itself. This video is by no means timely. I just want to use this drama as an example of two things. Firstly, if you're the maintainer of a project, how not to actually communicate with your user base if you don't really want to annoy them. And secondly, if you're a user, or better yet, a developer, who tries to submit a patch to a project, how not to communicate about that patch if you want something to actually be done about it. So what's being done here is a very simple pull request. It's not an issue that was submitted saying, hey, you should go and fix this. This person went and fixed the problem themselves and then submitted the patch to the project. So inside of Kitty, what actually happens is every 24 hours, it will automatically go and check the server if there is an update and then inform the user if there is actually an update available. Now this isn't that bad, it's by no means built in telemetry in Kitty, it's just checking an update server if there's an update and then telling you there's an update. But heavy terminal users typically care a lot about privacy and believe that applications they're running shouldn't just go and open up a network request without any input from the user. And this isn't an opt-in feature, this is opt-out. So this person assumed that because it's a terminal, this has to be a bug. That there's no way that this functionality would have been put here on purpose. So they decided to make this patch that would go and fix that problem. And honestly, it, it seemed like an honest mistake because this is just something that you'd probably have enabled for testing and then forget to go and revert it back afterwards. So the patcher says, I believe that any kind of opt-out mechanism that connects to a remote resource is an anti-feature. Automatic updates or update detection is a useful feature, but is only a feature, and users should be aware of its existence if it is turned on. By making it an opt-out mechanism, you're effectively misleading users who assume that terminal emulators do not, by default, have a built-in phone home mechanism please do not contribute to the normalization of surveillance in GNU slash Linux software. Now, up until this point right here, he was going perfectly fine. This is where he made his first mistake. So in response to this, the maintainer whose first name I can't actually say because I like money, says, I disagree. And because this patch had a lot of upvotes, his response got a lot of downvotes. Now, from this he says, oh, and for the future, if you're going to make such pull requests to other projects, kindly refrain from using the term surveillance and misleading, they are beyond offensive. Now, because he straight up just shut this down without any conversation whatsoever, obviously there are people in here saying, well, wait, Kitty opens up network connections without my knowledge? How are these terms offensive? Like, what are you doing? Why are you trying to shift the focus away from the actual problem? And he finished up by saying, any sort of issues, wonderful. Hey, you aren't doing me a favor by using Kitty. You don't like the fact that it has functionality to notify you of updates that is on by default. Go use something else and stop wasting my time. And next time, spend two minutes to Google the issue before posting duplicates and wasting hardworking maintainers' time. Now, this response, I don't know what he was thinking with this, but this is not how you communicate with people who are actually using your project. And when it comes to this other issue that exists, there is no other issue. I don't know what he's talking about. The only other issue related to the default update interval is this one right here. The name of the variable is update check interval, and what this was basically was adding in some instructions so if packages want to change this, they know how to change this. And then back to the previous comment where he says that terms like surveillance and misleading are beyond offensive. Don't pretend like you're offended by this. You develop a terminal. If you've never heard hardcore terminal users complain that something is surveillance when it's not actually surveillance, you've never been on the internet. You are not offended by this. No one believes that. So let me handle your PR for you because you've clearly no idea what you're doing. What you could have said instead is something like, I can understand why some people have an issue with this, but I don't believe this is an issue that actually needs to be addressed. And how about instead of disabling this feature, we inform the users of the feature the first time they run the application. It's such a simple solution that would have led to far less people actually being annoyed. But instead of doing that, what he did was close the issue with no discussion to be had before doing so, 
And then right at the end, he decided, well, I'm sick of dealing with comments. I'm just going to go and limit the conversation to collaborators. Basically because I think he knew that if he let this be open, there would be a ton of comments that came very, very shortly after once people started hearing about this. Now, this is a very small sample size, but the few people who actually did see this clearly wanted this patch to actually be merged. Now, I'm not saying that if someone goes and submits a pull request to your project that you have to submit every single PR that's made. Some of them are trying to actively harm the project or really just do nothing useful at all. But what I do think you should be doing is when there is obvious support for something like this to be done, have a discussion about it and don't just be a jerk about it. But one thing amusing that did come from this is it sort of shows how poorly written Kitty actually is in some places. So looking at the patch itself, only a couple of lines were changed. This is the line that actually controls the update interval, but also the update interval is hard coded in one of the checks. Why is it hard coded? Just store that in a variable as well. I know that Python doesn't have constants, but... Storing it in a variable at least allows people who are looking at the code base to see exactly what that's supposed to be. Now, I want to talk about the comment on the issue itself. So, as I mentioned earlier, this part right here, perfectly fine. I fully agree that it should be an opt-in mechanism, and if you want to go and enable it, it's your system, that's perfectly fine. I can't stop you doing that, but it should be opt-in because a terminal should not be making just random network requests without me actually knowing about it. It is an anti feature, perfectly fine. But the problem that we have is when we start using terms like misleading users and surveillance. And I've talked about this with terms like botnet, and I'm telling you that it really does make people take you less seriously when you use these terms when they are not at all the correct terms to be using. Obviously, if it's connecting to a server, that server can see its IP address, but if the server isn't actually saving any of that data, you cannot just go and call it surveillance just because a network request is being made. Obviously, at some point, there is a point where you could say it is surveillance, but I don't think a simple update check is by any means the criteria that actually reaches that goal. But if your goal is to increase privacy, I can fully understand why you'd want to minimize the number of connections being made from your system and treat any extra connection as some form of surveillance. However, when you're communicating with other people who don't share the same mindset, you have to use some sort of common language that you both understand. And calling things like this surveillance doesn't really translate to people who don't share the exact same mindset as you. Especially when terms like misleading users and surveillance have such a negative connotation attached to them and have intent attached to them as well. You're basically saying that the maintainer of Kitty is just intentionally trying to just spy on their users when that's not what's happening. From their perspective, it seems like they're just trying to provide a useful feature and they think that having it enabled by default just makes more sense. Yes, this is by definition phoning home. I don't really have an issue with this term here being used. That's perfectly fine. And the maintainer didn't complain about this either. That is what it is. But this isn't the worst kind of phoning home out there. There was no reason for the original comment to be intentionally inflammatory by using terms like misleading users and surveillance. There was no reason for the maintainer to just disagree and then shut everything down without any discussion. So use this as an example of what not to do if you're trying to work in an open source way. Keep in mind that when you are submitting to an open source project that you are actually working with other people. I know usually you're just working through text and you're seeing just an image, but there is actually a person behind that. And if you keep that in mind, things like this probably won't go down anywhere near as much. However, something that is handled well though is Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to 
Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, Lee, Stephen, Thoreau, Tony, Tushar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute. If you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube, so I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.